I was really proud of our team today. Um, a resilient, tough, hard-fought SEC win. Um, they are hard to come by, and I think that's a really good uh, football team we just played. I said that all week. Uh, when they don't turn the ball over, they're, they're hard to beat. They did not turn the ball over. They got a physical back, um, and they do a really good job defensively. So a lot of respect to those guys. I thought it was really hot today. Um, our guys and their guys struggled a little bit with the stamina part. Um, but I was proud of Carson. He stood in there, made some really key throws, made some really good decisions with the ball. Um, and uh, I thought we used the backs well in terms of the amount of play those guys got. So, thanks. A little horrible on that play, but you know that's that's a, that's a that's a really good back. Um, when you play really good backs, they're going to break tackles. I was more disappointed in the pursuit than I was the tackling. We did miss one tackle, but there were seven other people that never got a chance to get a tackle because they were tired, couldn't get there, not hustling. I mean, um, in football, you got to defeat a block, make a tackle. We defeated a block and missed a tackle, so everybody makes a lot of big deal about the tackling and. Uh, you know, I, I went home from practice, I guess it was Wednesday or Thursday, and I was like, man, tackling, our tackling's bad. We didn't tackle good at Thursday practice. And I got home and I watched the Falcons and uh, somebody, and I was like, man, the tackling is awful all over. It's not, I'm not saying the Falcons, are, uh, but I'm saying in the NFL, it's just bad tackling, and we have bad tackling. So it's, uh, it's indicative of, you know, the culture that, the uh, football that people don't tackle, people don't hit, people don't practice like they used to, including us. Yeah, it was more than the touchdowns. Obviously, touchdowns are great, but that's not what it's about. It's about the hard yards. It's about the third and ten catch that he gets and makes it fourth and one. It's about the fourth and one play that he gets it and makes one. He's earned really hard yards. Uh, he is a great leader. He is a great kid. Um, he's an explosive player. Uh, but I thought, you know, I thought today he got winded. He got tired. I mean, he was tired in the game. He wasn't as explosive as he can be, but neither was their defense, neither was – you know, the pursuit. I mean, both teams at times were just sloppy. How much confidence do you have calling that first down and putting it out there and first? Well, I, I thought about what would you rather have on defense? You know, would you rather have somebody punt it or go for it there? And, um, you know, you, you, you feel like you can get a, a yard when you have to get a yard. And we had enough lead that we could afford to do that. Um, you make that a one score game, it's a much tougher decision. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I actually had a bad view. I couldn't tell. I thought it was going at Dylan, um, but Carson said he was he was throwing it to Dom, and he was waiting on him to run the return route, and uh, he was coming back on the return. It just took him a while to come out of it. How do you evaluate how Drew did today, and how cool of a moment for Mike to have his son present in this? And yeah, Drew has worked really hard. Drew's a tremendous athlete. People don't give him enough credit for second level blocks, getting downfield, effort. I mean, he is probably one of our highest effort players because every play he's running downfield to go hit somebody. And I was really proud of him, and uh, he, it was a great moment. You know, he was uh, a ring bearer in my wedding and uh, just got a lot of respect for, for Drew and the way he works and to see him grow up and just be the, 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 the great man and person that he is. And uh, I was happy for him to have success today. Yeah, I don't even know if we started fast. I mean, I guess we did. I guess you count that as starting fast. But I don't count it when we have a third and 13 and give it up on the screen. That's not starting fast to me. Um, we got to get off the field, get the field position battle, flip the field, and take it over, um, especially at home. Um, I didn't think we did that, um, but it certainly was not. Um, it certainly wasn't last week. How did you feel about that execution of exactly what got right before the team went in with the first down? Well, that was great. That was the, 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 the momentum swing of the game, the decision to punt that and not go for it or not kick the field goal, which was a tough decision for me with 56-yarder, eh, questionable range. They're going to get the ball and go right here and have momentum. If, they, if, that, if we don't make that field goal and they get momentum, you're, you're, you're questioning that decision. I had a lot of confidence that he could make it, but not enough that I couldn't say we're going to pin him inside the 5 or 10. If we kick it in the end zone there, you know, we, we basically gain, we give up 16, we get 16 yards of field position, and uh, those are hard decisions. So credit goes to Aaron and Dom and Brett Thorson, and then credit goes to the defense for stopping them, and then Carson and those guys capitalized. We won situational football, which was the two minute before the half. Kirby, uh, this statement that you said to be after the Alabama game, you didn't know you could, you didn't think that you had 
Uh, I mean, I, I love Nick. I, I, I reached out to him after our game. I initiated the contact and told him, I said, the sun's still going to come up tomorrow because that was a saying he always had before the game to make you realize that, you know, it's so big to us as coaches, but it's a game. It's a game of football. Sun's going to come up. And I told him Sunday morning, I said, sun's still coming up. He said, you got a great team. Um, they play really hard, and uh, they should be proud of the way they played and um, keep getting them better. And uh, I appreciate those comments. I, I think Vandy's got a great program and does a great job. I mean, it's a lot of other people that don't respect Vandy. I, re I respect Clark Lee. I respect his team, his quarterback, what they've done. They beat Virginia Tech. I mean, somebody told me that six of eight games were decided by one score or less in our league. Nothing shocks me about our league. So Texas A&M, Missouri. Welcome to the SEC. It's hard every week. And I got a feeling that it's not going to stop. It's a, it's, a, it's a consistency in performance. And when you ride the wave of emotion, you get caught on the bottom of the wave at sometimes. And we're just trying to do this. We're just trying to keep getting better and keep getting better. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, that was crazy to be where – I mean, I didn't know how long it was going to be, and then I get a call, he can play. And I'm like, what? Like, we thought it was going to be a couple of weeks. And then he didn't even practice, I guess. I don't know what day it was, Monday, Tuesday. I don't know. I, don't, I forget what day he even got cleared. But, I mean, he just goes out there, gets back to working. He's so solid. Um, he's so reliable. And uh, jumped right back in and did a good job. Yep, Smiles injured, and I thought the guy stepped up and did a great job. Uh, Jalen Walker had to play more of an inside linebacker role, which is what we anticipated going into the year. CJ's banged up. Raylan's pushing hard. Um, we got to get other guys ready. Terrell, Chris Cole, Justin Williams, they all got to step up and play. He's a freshman, and, and we played with two last year. And uh, it's tough if you have to play every down with a freshman. But he, he is a sponge. He has gotten so much better since he arrived. And he has high upside. He's extremely long. He's extremely fast. But he's a freshman. So, you know, you have to temper your expectations with a freshman because they haven't done it before. But he has proven to be a good special teams player. And he continues to get better. Huge, huge. I mean, the, 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 we, we didn't have a good drive coming out, which is frustrating because it's like, okay, let's come out. We got the ball first. Let's go. And I think we were either three and out or, or something like that. It was quick. And then they score, and here we go. We're, we're going to be in a, a battle. But that's what those games are, and I thought our offense responded. That, that was closer to the offense that we had last year where it was like when we get punched on defense, they respond. They had more third down conversions. They had, you know, throws and catches. They were they were more efficient in the run game and could have even been more efficient in the run game. But uh, that was what we need. Coach, if you had a great team overall performance, like A C D or whatever, what grade would you give them and why? Yeah, I'm not a grader. I'm not gonna do it until I watch the tape. I'm sorry, I can't fall into that trap. Um, I wanna watch the tape and uh, evaluate it before I give a grade. Kirby, Kirby how close is Yeah, I don't know on Christian. I thought he was fine. I mean, he had ice on his knee, and uh, he played a lot in the game. So I, I thought at the point that, that, he, that, that, were, that he was not in, and we were already playing other people. So, you know, we'll see. Um, and Jared was not able to go. He's been dealing with a, a foot injury since uh, uh, last week. But he felt like he could go in and play. If he had to be the backup in the emergency center, he felt like he could do that. So we were going to use him as that if, if we needed to. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, it's great, but I don't want to use him in the third and fourth quarter. I want to use him as much as we can. But it's hard when you got, you know, you're trying to feed three guys there, and I got tremendous confidence in all three of those guys. Um, and each one of them, um, sometimes you just got to ride the hot hand with who's going, and each one of them is going to continue to get better. Is that 
It wasn't Jalen Milrow. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, 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 would, I would love to, to, and I don't mean that any slight to Peyton Thorne, but, and I don't know that it was the same play. I'm not saying that. It looked like they tried to run the same play, and uh, Jalen was a little more under control, and he did what he was supposed to do last week, and he did what he was supposed to do today. But, uh, you know, the guy last week outran the, the whole defense. Well, I, I think we could run it better. And I don't I mean, I don't like using excuses. There's probably a lot of teams. I think Auburn's missing one. I don't know what the stat is in the SEC for guys missing offensive line starters. But most teams we've played have had maybe one out. We had two out. Um, and we're not, we're not like we used to be. Nobody is, uh, and that I know of has nine, 10 great offensive linemen. So like, we're thin. And it's, it's, it's gonna become a recurring theme, in my opinion, across college football. You're thinner and thinner and thinner. And uh, you got to be smart, maybe in how you practice. But I mean, I'm proud of the guys we have, and they're doing a great job. And we are running the ball decent, but we can run the ball better. I mean, we can run the ball better than we did today. I know it. No, I mean, he has a routine he does. He trusts that routine, and, and, and I don't disagree, but I also think he did play really well against Alabama at times, and he got a lot of confidence in that game. So it was not uh, – you're looking at the whole picture of the game, but there were a lot of good things he did, and he did a lot of good things today. And, and, and nobody really understands what Carson does uh, in our offense, and you can't appreciate it unless you know it. So – I understand the scrutiny that he's under, just like me. He's the quarterback and I'm the head coach. We're going to be under immense scrutiny. But Carson Beck is a tough winner, competitor, and leader. And uh, I'll go to war with a guy anytime. Yeah, it's tough. I'm going to be honest, because all people talked about all week was what? That. Right? I mean, that's it's all people talked about all week. I mean, it was all over every Twitter feed, all over every social media, everything. And I, I told y'all before we played them, I said, when we win or lose this game, there is a tough physical game after it. And there is. And guess what there is next week? Another one. Humility is a week away in our league at all times. And that's the consistency I want to have. We're not going to win all our games all the time. That's not going to happen. You know, I want our fan base to appreciate what we have and give their all and be unbelievable with crowd noise and make energy and, and just make home games because we need it to be tough on other teams to play here. But it's not, it's, it's not the same as it's been in the past. It's got to be energetic. It's got to be already. You know what? It was hot today. It was hot today. It was hot on our players too. And our players pushed through it. So I'm really proud of this team because I thought it was a tough week and we answered the bell. I mean, just play with more consistency. I mean, we, we still have plays that are like uh, a play where Arian's running, a, we're going to take a touchdown shot, and he thinks Carson's scrambling, so he breaks off the route, and we throw a long incompletion. Well, that's second 10. I mean, you cannot waste plays. You might throw incompletions, but you can't waste plays. You might uh, not block a guy, but the back's going to make you miss. You can't waste plays. And, I, you know, I don't know. I can't say how many plays we wasted today, but we were much more efficient. But we've got a quarterback, an offensive staff, and offensive players that can be efficient. And there's teams that they screw it up. I mean, jump off sides, get them go the wrong way. We usually don't do those things. We're very efficient and we have to maintain that. So when you have things like this where talked about that last year, how do you help the players block that out? Nah, I, I just keep telling them about Auburn. You know, and say that this is a, a, a war. This is a, I mean, it's a, it's a rivalry game. It's hard. They're a five and O team. If they don't turn it over, they're five and O. How would you feel and prepare for Auburn if they were five and O? Because that's what they are in my mind. Because I can't promise you turnovers. Those are like random. So, I, you know, our focus was on them all week. I think our guys wanted to get that taste out of their mouth and go play. That helped. Um, we talked about earning the right to cut it loose. We, we really had not cut it loose in a game. And I thought, I don't know that we did today, but we were closer to it. Yeah, he's an awesome kid, man. What a great story. I mean, this is one of the greatest stories of college football that nobody talks about. I mean, the guy 
he didn't like walk on because we called him. He got in school here and said, hey, coach, I'd like to play football at Georgia. Like, we didn't recruit him. We recruited uh, Lad McConkey. We recruited these walk-ons. This guy showed up at our doorstep and is a starter, competitor, blocking field goals. Didn't have to come back this year. I mean, he's like, I don't know, coach. I, you know, he came back because he loves this place. He loves Georgia. He don't do it for him. He don't do it for money. I mean, he's never asked for anything. I mean, he loves the place. I mean, there's somebody out there that's a fan, and they say, well, you know, you can do NIL. Somebody ought to say, Dan Jackson, I'm going to take care of you the rest of your life because I promise you he'll be the best employee, the best worker, the best. I mean, that's after his football career because I really believe the guy's got a chance to play in the National Football League because he's fast, he's tough, and he's smart. No, I would, I would probably attribute it to the fact we were in a three-down front. They blocked odd mug, and they brought a guy around the edge, and we didn't do a good job handling that. We didn't strike blockers and get off. You've got to do sometimes what you call open a can of whoop-ass. And we, 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 didn't, we, we didn't do that. So.